Hi, this is Mighty CS Man. I have a complete curriculum on Intro to Java Programming using the Building Java Programs book and the Practice It website. Today we're looking at Chapter 6, which is about File Input Output, and we're looking at this self-check 11. And so what we're supposed to be doing here is they, they actually gave us the code to scan this file here, and they want us to output the lines and words. And uh, I am going to go through and actually show you how to do these, these changes on this method, but I would suggest you definitely try it on your own first, and then if you get stuck, come back and, um, and then watch the video. So first I'm going to actually just run it, and let's see what kind of errors we get. All right, so here's the first error here. And rather than pay too much attention on what the error says, we're just going to look at what's going on. So they create a new scanner up here, and they pass it in. Okay, and then the first thing that's being done here is we create another scanner and assign it to that variable. So we don't want to do that. This is a very common user error. It's usually in practice it when the function is specified to take a scanner and then students go ahead and create their own scanner. So if you do this and create your own scanner here, then you're not going to be getting the input that practice it wants you to be looking at. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this line completely because what we really want to do is use the scanner that they're passing in. All right, so let's go ahead and just run that to clear that up. Okay, next problem is while input next line, it says the string cannot be converted to a Boolean. So again, look, rather than look at the error, let's think about what's supposed to be happening here. And again, I'd really like to see pseudocode here. And the pseudocode should be um, while there is a next line, okay? While there is a next line. So what next line function does on a scanner is it actually gets the next line. And you never want to do that because what happens here is you throw that line away. You never get to read it. So there's really two, possi two possibilities. Um, one, you could move this out and assign it to a variable. But actually, we don't actually want to look at the line. We just want to know if there is a line. Okay, so in that case, what we actually need is to change this to a function that you learned about in section uh, chapter 5.4, uh, scanner look ahead. There's a whole series of these called has whatever. So has next, has next line, has next double. And this is a Boolean, okay, because next line was actually a string. But what we want is a Boolean to tell us whether or not there is another line available. Okay, so now we're going to check whether there is a line without actually pulling that line off. Okay, the next thing that's go supposed to be going on is here, it's supposed to read one line. So, um, first of all, there is no line function on a scanner. Okay, there, that's just, it doesn't exist. So, what is supposed to be happening? They're supposed to, they're supposed to be reading a line. So we, that it was actually just used up here. The, the function to read a line is actually next line. Okay, that is actually going to read the line and it returns a string. Okay, so just as a, that's not actually 100% what we want, but it at least solves that problem. Okay, so this brings in a string. Increments the line counter. Then it says tokens. So it's, this loop is supposed to read the tokens in each line. So while what we need to put in here, we have to check to see whether there's a token. And if there is a token, we need to read the token. So I'm looking here. To here. This is supposed to read the token, but it's actually has next, which means it checks to see if there is a token. And then here, this one is actually next, which returns the string. And again, what we need here is we need the has next. So these two need to actually get swapped. So we need to have has next here. And here it needs to be next. All right, so I'm not going to pay too much attention to this error message right now. Instead, I'm going to think about what is this loop supposed to be doing here? This loop is supposed to be getting each token. So it's supposed to be checking if there is a token and then getting the token. And then so to check whether there is a token here, you can't actually do that operation. You can't, there is no has next on a string. That's, we have this full string again let's scroll up so this is the line hello how are you okay and we want to get each string out of there well in section 6.3 it teaches you 
that what you need to do is you get the line, okay? But then you actually need to put it into a scanner. So instead of being a string, this needs to be a scanner. And then you have to create a new scanner, as you always do for any type of object. And then you can provide that string into the new scanner. So now what we're left with is line is a scanner, and its input is a string such as, hello, how are you? Okay, so now we can now check whether there has next. So hello is going to be the next token. So this will be, yes, there is a, a string. Then here, this one will actually get the first word, hello, and it'll increment the word count, etc. All right, so we no longer have any error, uh, any syntax errors, but it's still not quite working. So let's take a look at the output. So there's only one test here. Here's the file input. So that's the file we looked at before. And we expected to have five lines and 21 words. Instead, we only have one line and one word. Okay, so we need to look at what, what else we need to do. The problem is, so why, why is it only one line and one word? That should seem very suspicious to you. You know, if we were off by just a small number, that would kind of make sense. Why is it only one line and one word? Well, here, let's, let's, um, let's give a little debugging here. Okay. So when I, after I increment word count, just temporarily, what I'm going to do is do a system.out.println of word. Okay. So we're going to see, uh, what is the word? Okay, so let's see what it printed. So our output, this is a little bit confusing. Like what, what is this example.txt there? That is actually the one word. Okay, so here's the problem. This is another very common user error. I'm going to get rid of this line, or no, I'll leave it there for a minute. But the, the problem is actually back here. It's where we created new scanner of example.txt. So scanner usually in, in the past chapters always has system.in, okay? And I've talked to you a couple of times now about how practice it actually uses it. It's, it's, it's a test harness and practice it will create a scanner based on a string and then pass it into you. And that's why many of the practice it problems say that it, your method has to accept a scanner. And this is exactly what practice it does. They, they put together a bunch of words and that's a string and they pass it in. But in this case, all your, your scanning is just this one word, example.txt. What we want is we actually want to open up a file. And you can do that by saying new file of the file name. Okay, That's going to actually open up the file and then be able to scan these words out. Now, this I'm going to run it. It's still not going to work right because I'm printing out every word. Oh, yes. We also have to, whenever you're doing this stuff, you need to throw... Um, uh, declare the function throws file not found exception. Okay, so your method either has to handle that exception or it has to declare that it throws it um, whenever we're dealing with files. Okay, so we have to just declare that it throws that. All right, so now, so now it's actually outputting. Hello, how are you? Okay, so that's actually what it's reading. It's too bad that it truncates it. But so we're reading the right file now. So let's get rid of this line. And now try running it. Ah, okay, so now it actually ran it. But um, I also want to show you here. Let's see if I can do this here. I'm going to replace, uh, sorry, this one here. So this right now is creating a new file with this example.txt, right? But what happens if I do what I was telling you, practice it does. They actually, that backslash n actually means a new line. Uh, actually, there's two new lines. I am fine backslash n. And... Uh, Okay, so that is the quoted string. Okay, I think that should work. Let's try that. 
Okay, no, it, it's uh, it's not closing the literal. So I just need to go ahead and do that all as one string there. Now let's try running it. Ah, okay, so it actually does work. See? So what I did is I put the string in here. For example, here, what happens if I delete one of these backslash ends? So this is what practice it is doing behind the scenes when it tells you that your function needs to take a scanner. This is exactly what practice it does. It creates a new scanner based on a string and then passes it into you. Okay. But let's just to be clear, what it should do is it should do new file on example.txt. And now let's run it again. Okay, so this problem was the first problem in this chapter that really deals with um, line-based processing. Okay, so in line-based processing, you're going to read one line at a time, and then you're going to read each token in the line. And how do you do that? You actually have to do two levels of scanners. You have a scanner for the file, and make sure that, that you're actually creating a new file based on the file name and not just giving it the file name because if you give it the file name it's just going to have that one word okay so you created a scanner based on the file and then for each line here we got the line input that next line you have to then create another scanner okay a nested scanner and then that scanner is going to get each token one at a time okay and that's how we are able to figure out their there are five lines here with 21 words. All right, so that's 611. Oops, if you found this uh, problem useful, please like and subscribe.